Hello, good morning everybody. It is Jillian. So, sometimes I don't always have everything figured out on what I'm going to say because sometimes I just think about, sometimes I watch videos on YouTube in the middle of the night and it, I don't really want to cover that topic because it's just no point. But I do notice things as I watch the Netflix series like Suits or any other um, posts on Facebook or anything on YouTube. And I think about them. I don't necessarily say, okay, I'm going to focus on this and plan out a whole situation or plan out a whole plan of attack of covering something. I just think about stuff because that's what I do. What else are you going to do in this world besides think and do? But what are you going to do when you're thinking? And so I was thinking about Imhotep and the Imhotepanization of our kids because we're in a high frequency environment. Kids are maturing faster, which means they are going to make the connections faster if they are a certain blood type because some blood types have more of the antigen antibody programming, the energy conversion, the quick, quick, quick reaction in their brain. And that is the blood type A and B, positive or negative. But uh, yeah, and the blood type O are the people who are more of the robust and I would say a slower reaction time. It's all relative, but probably made for, you know, labor intensive type of stuff. And as you've seen in the holistic world, they talk about eating for your blood type. And so yesterday when I was going through just through Google and I'm looking up a blood type A and B food and it just reminded me that, that yeah, blood type A and B, there's a reason why I didn't have a lot of the milk or the red meat or any of the food for type O when I was raised, <laughs> when I was raised as a child. Because, yeah, now that I look at it, at the diet that I was given as a kid, it was for blood type A and B, chicken, fish, fruits and vegetables, certain foods that they say to blood type A and B stay away from because it would develop an evolution. It would mess up the programming. Okay. So that's how I'm coming to the conclusion, which is probably a correct conclusion that both my parents were probably blood type A and B, probably even my sister too. I probably was the only one that was blood type O in that family. And it would stand to reason why I was kind of like, I don't say the black sheep, but very different. And so that is would be an educated guess because hindsight is 2020. <laughs> okay. Hindsight is 2020. When you look back on how you're raised and why you were raised and where you're raised and all that, then you make those connections. And so the the metamorphosis from someone who was blood type A and B to then potentially translating into a blood type O, it's a painful metamorphosis. And it is something that <laughs> if you are trapped in wealth or you're destitute, you would have a very hard time transitioning because you're in survival mode. When you're trapped in wealth and having to produce an image, you're in survival mode. You can't change unless you're willing to give up almost everything you've ever worked for and have to reteach people about who you are in your circles of influence. And when you're really, when you're really poor, you're in survival mode because you have to work every single day. And you have to put in so many hours and then you're like, well, what is a life where you're working 40 plus hours a week to survive and then go home and feel pain and sleep and not have a life, not have all the, the trappings of social capital, social wealth. I mean, that's, that's what people are facing when they're in the, in the, either they're really poor or they're really rich. And so there's got to be somewhere in the middle that those who are willing to go through that metamorphosis, they can't be poor and they can't be really rich. Because even if you're really rich, again, people are dependent upon you to put off an image, to act in a certain way. Okay? And so that's when I was thinking about trust fund kids. And now I'm watching the Netflix videos and trust fund kids. And I'm thinking like, oh. Wow. Trust fund kids. <laughs> and so, uh, and so, yeah, trust fund kids. And, and this is, I'm gearing this towards 
mostly Silicon Valley because that's where I came from. But even here in Ohio, where people are, there's people who are like in the middle of the road. They're not so poor. And they're not so rich. So they might have some room, to, a wiggle room. But, uh, I mean, yeah, <laughs> there's people like me who are at home, who maybe living off of Social Security, living off a of pension, living off of uh, disability. And they don't have to be anywhere. They're retired. And so there's people in Ohio that are probably in that status. They're not like the main breadwinner. They're not even, you know, they're, they're not even 50%. Uh, or they're they're not fifty percent of an income coming in, and so, and maybe they're not even by themselves, and they're retired or on a pension, or on some kind of disability. And so that's the optimal way to be. In a metamorphosis, <laughs> if you're trying to 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 develop a metamorphosis, is that you have somebody around you that could potentially get you through the hard times. As far as metamorphosis. Now, what do I mean? In the J world, okay, like I've shown you the last seven years, how hard it was to go through that transition. But luckily, my husband is fucking kick ass. And he was able to tap into his maximum potential. He's enjoying his life. I mean, he wished he had more sex, but hey, you don't want to give everybody what they wish for because that's how you destroy them. So, yeah. So on that note, that's a good thing. But he gets to boat, he gets to go fishing, he gets to do whatever he wants at work and kick ass at work. He, I mean, he has the, he has tapped into some major awesome potential. Not that he couldn't do it without me, but I'll tell you, both of us hanging out together and merging worlds together has helped each other get to the next level that we probably wouldn't get to if it wasn't for the fact that we hung out together, that we married each other. Okay. And so while he's out kicking ass out there in the world, being a badass in his community, because he is a badass, I'm developing my brain. I went through a major metamorphosis. I have the freedom to study, the freedom to think about stuff, the freedom to do so much stuff. And I don't have, it doesn't cost a lot, very minimal cost. Okay. And I don't, I'm not in the public eye. I mean, I, I am and I'm not. But I'm not in the public eye where I have to put off an image and look a certain way. I have the freedom to look ugly. I have the freedom to look disheveled. I have the freedom to look any way because I'm not trying to sell an image. I'm not trying to sell anything. I'm trying to sell life. That life is evolutionary and it can have relative equilibrium and it can also be evolutionary at the same time. Okay? And I'm not a trust fund kid. I'm not. Even though... Been raised in Silicon Valley. Yes, there's a lot of money out there. But it's like Bill Gates is not leaving a shit ton of money to his kids. His kids have degrees. They were groomed into whatever position. So relative to that situation, their kids, his kids are going to have to earn their way into this world, right? As far as figuring out what they're going to do with their degrees. Well, I didn't get groomed into it. I mean, they tried to, but I resisted so much. But um, so I didn't have any degrees to be groomed into. I didn't have anything to be groomed into because when you think about it, it's like I was trying to get into psychology as, as a young adult, as I was 18, 19, 20, after I finally made up with my parents for, for a certain amount of time. And I just, it just, it did, it, it, yeah. And so, so then what, what was I going to fucking do? I mean, what, go into the sciences like my dad? You know, by in, 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 in uh, chemical engineering or go into psychology, psychotherapy and... That wasn't going to happen. I think my mom made sure that wasn't going to happen. I'm sure there was something that said to her, yeah, because then I would figure out what was going on. I would figure out sooner, but yeah. And I, and I was, I wasn't focused enough even then back then. And so, so what was I going to do? <laughs> All right. So what was I going to do? And that's when I did everything. And so how do you leverage and control someone? Give them what they want. How do you build somebody up? Provide a way to earn what they need and they can earn what they want. And so again, as raised, as, as in, raised where I was raised in the house, 
when we watched TV, we couldn't have, we couldn't ask for the toys that were on TV. We could write out our Christmas list and we would get a certain amount of things on the Christmas list, but they weren't, I didn't get the Mickey Mouse talking phone like I wanted. <laughs> okay. And so it, it, that, the key thing is not spoiling somebody, not giving them everything they want. Provide a way to earn what they need and they could earn what they want. Right now, people are wishing for the things they wish they never wished for. And what do I mean by that? People wish for all the cures. They wish they could have peace. But what's going to happen is to die suddenly. Rest in peace. That's what people are wishing. They wishing for things they wish they never wished for. I'm glad I, I can handle the evolution and handle the energy that's coming through every so often. I mean, yeah, I felt the heartbeat yesterday. I had to take a nap. Um, sometimes like today, this morning, when I was pushing out all that crap, literally this, my little mark of the beast hurt, hurt. It actually hurt a lot, hurt more than usual. Okay. And that's crazy because how could, why would a scar hurt? Oh, believe me, it does. This is my dog reminding me every single time the climate changes and it's more aggressive. My body has to push out more of the crap. I mean, everything is pushing out and even the the scar tissue is, it pulsates during that time. It stings. It feels like it stings. It's, it's weird. It's a weird phenomenon. I never had a scar that actually hurt. Okay. So when you have to earn your way into this world, literally, I'm telling you, the fruits are sweeter. And so I was raised never to get what I wanted but find a way to get what I needed, which was why I was never rich, even as a young adult, or even as an adult, I'm not rich now. But I don't want for a lot of things. I, believe me, I don't want for a lot of things, and I know when to pull back when I need to, because of all the different conditions that go on. It's not difficult, see in Silicon Valley, it's not difficult to get groomed into position, and even in here in Ohio, when you go to different households and their parents are grooming their kids to go into certain things. They'll, and, and the kids have ge the genetics that they can do all the, 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 the schooling. Potentially, if they don't have their predisposed issues trigger sooner. And so it's not difficult to be groomed into position in high level schools in Silicon Valley feeding into all the high level companies. Because once you get a taste of money, power, and prestige, and social capital, you're trapped. Remember, the trappings of wealth. When that guy wrote to me, I'm not going to say his name because he, he's, he, he knows what's going on. He wrote me that email and was saying, you're right. Giving people so much money and so much wealth and so much power and prestige and social capital, like overpaying them, they, don't, they won't leave and they won't change. And you trap them. Just like that utopian society, Universe 25, giving all those rats and mice everything they could ever want. No predation, no disease, unlimited food and water, not unlimited space, and they keep procreating, 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 and eventually there's all out extinction. That's how you destroy a community, is you give them everything they could ever want. A community of cells in your body, and that's, yeah. And so you become trapped. It's so like I said, the key thing is not to become so poor or not to be so rich. So the key thing is not to be so poor you are destitute and trapped. The key thing is not to be so rich you can't give it up. That's the balancing act. You must have versatility. And so, yeah, COVID-19 woke up the demons and people. And they did recover from it, but they're still on the death trajectory. Remember how Ashton Kutcher couldn't walk for a year? That was the devil taking his due for being given such beauty and excellent genetics at the time. But again, what Bob Dylan said, the winners, winners will be losers and the losers will be winners as the times they are changing. The struggle might be real, but it will add so much character to you and you will stand out once you develop your storyline. And so the system loves a good comeback story from anyone minus the slow clap. And so trust fund kids are a dime a dozen and some turn out to be Hunter Biden because they were given everything they could ever want. They got into the drugs, they got into all the alcohol, they got into the getting over on people, the criminal activity. 
because their daddy already made it. Their mommy already made it. Why, what, what do they have left for them? What do they have left to strive for? Right? I mean, when I've already figured out how not to get cancer, what else are these kids out there in biotech going to do? Oh, they're going to develop another stem cell transplant protocol. They're going to develop more artificial intelligence with stem cells and just develop more ways to get cancer disease and chronic illness. That's the only thing left for these kids that are in biotech because we already figured out that the only way, the, the only way that you can actually get over dying from natural causes is if you feed yourself and release the damaged cells. And there's te techniques to do that without destroying yourself at the same time. So what's left for these kids to do? Develop more ways to get cancer. That's exactly what's left for these kids in biotech. Because, yeah, I mean, you can develop different body types and, and, and different phenotypical characteristics. You can play hybridization with animals and humans and introduce that to the population and develop tolerance. But if they, are, if they can't do the things that other people can do, when someone is a hybrid of something, not only do they look different, but they can't do certain things that other people can do, that's a suffering. Because society will have to accommodate someone who is different. But why is that bad? Should we have certain things in our society? Like, let's say, the rides. You have to be a certain height. If you're not a certain height in the rides, then you can't ride the rides. So that's one thing they can't do. Cars would have to accommodate people of a different type of body type and stature and all that. And so there is something to be said for a certain kind of uniformity in our society. So we don't have people feeling like society has to accommodate them and they're outnumbered, out, I don't know. Being able to walk and run and protect yourself and know how to use machinery and have I mean, I guess if you had six digits, would that be hard? Well, there's gloves are only five digits. We'd have to, society would really have to figure out what kind of diversity they're bringing into so they can accommodate people that are, are going to be different in a hybrid, even though they may not want to live forever. But for the time that they're here on earth, society would have to accommodate that type of diversity. And if society hasn't fully figured out what kind of diversity they're bringing into this world, then that's a suffering. When someone is just stuck as a mermaid, okay, and they have to only be in water and they can't hang out with other humans, that's a suffering if they know if there's that. But I mean, would you want when a, when there's a blob in in a, in a tank in a lab that has a soul that actually is conscious of itself? You think it wants to sit in as a blob in a tank in a lab and that be its life? That's the thing is that. You know, what's left for these kids to do in biotech? And we already figured out how to release the demons and build ourselves up and strengthen our body, mind, and spirit. What's left for these kids to do except to develop more suffering? And so that's why we're in a great reset because only the strongest kids are going to survive. The ones that are versatile. The ones that mommy and daddy figured out that they can't groom their kids into the things that they used to anymore because... Those positions and those standings may not be available or they are competing against a world out there that has a better genetics and predisposed issues in a slower frequency environment. And so, um, and so trust fund kids are a dime a dozen and some turn out to be Hunter Biden. So what will your story be? And when you're in the public eye having to sell an image, then you're really trapped because you have for you to get your life back. Not maintain the life that was given to you, but for you to get your life back, not only will it be painful, but you will have to go through a major metamorphosis and be out, be out of the public eye for a few years and for a long time. And you may even have to reinvent yourself because we see that now with some of the stars that they're gaining lots of weight because the environment changed and they may have predisposed issues that triggered. And so they're trying to sell that image, but are they going to survive the metamorphosis that was forced on them through this climate change? Okay. 
And so that's the thing. That's why I wanted to show you every single day what I look like during the different metamorphosis that I go through because of the climate change and because of my own predisposed issues to show you that you don't have to stay in a certain size. That maybe, you know, one day I'll look puffy and then the next day, once I release those demons, I don't look puffy anymore. That I may change in the body size, but I'm not fat. I'm just now full figured. And I have enough substance to me for the energy conversion when it happens and it's not as painful. And I could survive it without dying from natural causes. But I'm not too fat. I'm not too thin. I'm just right for my environment. And so... How many people have had their life be signed away in dentured servitude, a Stafford wife, or they're a performer like Britney Spears? And I hear allegedly that, you know, th these, these Hollywood stars and these performers were given so many different types of drugs, lithium and other types of stuff, to keep them performing. So can you imagine those that are Stafford wives, that, are, that have been married off to high-level people in different countries? And they and, and they're also performers on TV on some level, and they have to be on the drugs and the diets, and they're trapped because they have to sell an image. Not only are their husbands are high level and they have to look a certain way, but they're already they're a performer on TV, and they can't get out of that that lifestyle. And, and they're not that old when you think about it. It's not like they can retire and be like, okay, I'm just going to quit the business and go and get my life back. And so how do you survive the gifts and the curses and the spells that were given to you without dying from natural causes? And that's where Kenny Loggins, the gambler, know when to hold them and know when to fold them. And some people will live out their life and die in their position because they don't know when to fold them. And they can't fold them. They have to keep holding those cards. And and then, yeah, and, and then they, they, they won't win that bet. They're stuck in that life. And so when I think about uh, all the high-level schools like Wharton and Harvard, why am I thinking about Harvard? Because Harvard Law is like one of the most prestigious schools. And there's other law schools that are really prestigious. And I'm watching the suits and everything. And they're all about the trust fund kids and all about the high level schools that these trust fund kids are wondering if they should go into. And then you see the juxtaposition, the, um, the kid that was accepted into Harvard, but his drug dealing then uh, took, him, took him out of that running. He couldn't go to Harvard. And so since he was so smart, he was able to charm his way and intellectually show his, his uh, his capacity for photographic memory to charm his way into a high level law firm. And they hid the fact that he didn't go to Harvard behind hacking into the computer system. But, and so anyway, so what I'm saying is that Harvard law will help you figure out the law and you're a consultant in Harvard. I mean, when you're a lawyer, you're a consultant and you're looking for the loopholes or you're holding people accountable for breaking the law. And then you look at Wharton College, business, right? Business, quants, they do all the different financial, learning all the financial formulas and everything else and learning Wall Street, playing the crypto game, playing the, the, the selling of the junk bonds, boiler rooms, all the things that happen with the mortgage crisis, figuring out how to play with all the SEC stuff and, and oh my gosh. And so then you see these financial wizards that know how to break the law, don't know the whole law, and then you have the Harvard law grads coming in and either helping them find the loopholes or or finding, you know, or holding them accountable. And so that's why I made that juxtaposition that that's what that's America is that we have schools for financial wizards <laughs> if they have the capacity for it. And then you have the lawyers that will find the loopholes or will hold them accountable. And it's that back and forth, that plane of the positive and negative. And so you need both of that because that's how society makes a lot of money and can enforce the laws when they want to and not enforce them when they don't want to. 
just based upon what the intention is, what the need is. And so when you look at the mortgage crisis, you knew that was, that, that was, they could have stopped right when it began, but no, they wanted to see how far they could take it. Oh, and they did. And a lot of money was made. Enron too. And WorldCom and all those <laughs> financial wizards to figure out how to steal from the common man. And when you get greedy and you're, and you're putting all your money in these, and you're putting all your money and your eggs in one basket, or you're trying to get rich quick, and you get involved in all the hype and the wars out there, the financial wars, that's how these financial wizards on Wall Street take advantage of people. They take advantage of the greed that's out there because people are want to get rich quick. They don't want to earn their way into this world. They want to get rich quick. And so, so now you're seeing, so then, so yeah, so Wharton was great as far as the financial wizards. I mean, like Donald Trump, he was given so much access to money and he built up, he was a developer and all of that. And then, you know, privilege as hell. No one really said no to him. And, and, and he's, he's a trust fund kid. Oh, he was the, him and his children are trust fund children. And so then thought that he could go and be a president and okay, but you can't go against a system that already knows how to balance out both sides. And so now Harvard Law graduates are holding his ass accountable because he didn't know the law. He only knew how to play the, play all the odds. He knew he knew how to play the financial game. He played the political game. It's all the same shit. And then you have the Harvard Law graduates come in and be like, nope, sorry. And so, yeah, it, it's, it's a trip watching now from this vantage point what America was bred for to play both sides of the fence. And you see then obviously the grooming of the children going into these high level positions. Oh yeah, that's great. You've given a major platform and infrastructure and we appreciate your service and everything. You've, you've helped keep people distracted and, and given people <laughs> something else to think about or be an activist for or against. And you'll continue to do that until your last dying breath and there'll be another person groomed for the same thing, for something different. But I'm telling you, at some point, at some point, if you want to survive this great reset, you got to know when to hold them and know when to fold them. And right now, people are gambling. They are literally gambling. And so the whole Gen X people, you know, X means that you're a variable. That, okay, you've reached a certain point in life, whatever it is, and now you're, you're, you're trying to get, you're trying to achieve more stuff, but at what point are you going to allow yourself to finally release the demons? So then you take all your degrees and all of your inventions and whatever else you've done or not have done, and you put that to the side and find a way to survive. You'll still keep your intelligence, but now you have to then get your physiological intelligence and intellect figured out so you can survive because believe me if your gut is balanced your brain will remember everything you won't forget everything that you've learned you'll go through yeah metamorphosis it'll be painful but I I'm saying you know if you want to survive this and you want to go into the new world with all the knowledge of the last 40 something years 50 60 years and still survive and be awesome and outdo everyone that's trying to come up in this world with predisposed issues, you've got to take a hiatus and know when to say, okay, now it's time for me to hold back and let those who are, don't know any better find a way to come up and then you will take a few years to figure some shit out and then you'll come back <laughs> as amazing as ever. That's the whole J world, is realizing when it's time to just throw in all the cards and say, okay, I've achieved this much. Don't be greedy. Now it's time to chill and, 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 and take a back seat for a minute. Let somebody else do what they have to do. And then when you come back into the arena again, you will, you will have so much different awareness because you've released the demons. Now you have the uh, energy conversions in your brain and in your gut working for you. And you have released all the distractions and all the predisposed issues. And I can only imagine what else you're going to invent with all that knowledge you've acquired. What else you're going to invent, even with these changing times. I mean, th that's, yeah, 
And so this is, yeah, for all my trust fund kids out there. And that could be people in, you know, in, in, in lower SES economies because they have a bunch of family that will give them whatever they want. They have grandmas and grandpas that will bequeath them, you know, their estate. And so you have these trust fund kids that are even like, you know, in Ohio and they have a bunch of family that will just leave all their, you know, their worldly belongings to their grandkids. And so when these kids inherit $100,000 and they blow through it or $200,000 or half a million and they blow through it, maybe there's a way you can, you can use it as a platform to keep you propped up during the times that you are going to now go through your whole metamorphosis. Okay. To use that money fucking wisely so you can survive this shit. That's the key to understanding the J world is using your resources widely, wisely. And so when I said I am terrestrial, not spiritual, see spirituality is about defining and justifying dying and looking beyond earth and absolution. I am not advocating that in the J world. This is about living here on earth, understanding the games are being played knowing the strategy of the game and knowing your opponents. Why are they all opponents? Because you're all competing for the same shit. You're all competing to live. You're competing for the jobs, for the food, for the accolades, for the recognition. We're all in competition. I mean, that's what when I'm watching Suits, it was just like a whole action reaction. There is no peace in Suits. It was all like once they get over one thing, and everything is ironed out and great, they won, right? Nope. Then another thing comes up. And they have to go fight another fucking battle. Watching suits, like watching the, the all the different, you know, law firms, they're always in some kind of war. I mean, it looks glamorous on TV. Believe me, I, I, I definitely do get starry-eyed watching Gabriel Mocked. <laughs> That's how we say his name. Gabriel, Gabriel, whatever. The, the star of that show. Oh, he is gorgeous to watch. Oh, my God. I've seen people like that in the military that are just like so hot. <laughs> But he's amazing to watch, and the the intellect, the strategy, and the just the, the the male, the male oriented society is really interesting to watch. It's it's and you can take some of those tidbits, and take some of the, the what they are, what they are portraying, and take some of that on and realize that that, that you, when you want to be a warrior and you want to win, <laughs> you got to have. The intellect, you have the verb, the verbosity, <laughs> the personality. You got to fight to win without cannibalizing somebody else. And that's some of the things about in law when you are a lawyer is that sometimes you have to cannibalize somebody else in order to win. And then there's that whole thing, you know, how far do you take it? The ethics and the morals around that. But understanding the law is paramount. Because I'm going to tell you, when the law gets forced on you, when you are being forced to be held account to natural law, that's when you should know the law. Natural law. And so I know I, I made a very flat out statement. I'm going through my timeline now. When people are dying, they're all about love and kindness. That's their absolution. Oh, and they have many, many kids. <laughs> I know people laugh at that one. Yeah, that that's pretty, that, that was pretty uh, flat out. But I mean, that's kind of what I'm saying. You know, people are going through, they're suffering. They're all about love. They're loving everybody. They're all, and they're suffering and they're dying. They're all about love. Because what else is there? I mean, when you're dying. Hold on, I got to blow my nose. Um. So yeah, I'm wearing a, a different shirt today. I'm wearing a red shirt. But yeah, it's been pretty aggressive out there. Um, yeah, it, it is. It has. It is. And, but I can survive it. And again, look at, yeah. All right. And so, and so terrestrial immortality is the J world. I am not advocating spiritual immortality. Okay. Or transhumanism or all the religions, politics, science, all about dying, death, and absolution. I'm about terrestrial immortality. 
And that does require you releasing those demons and then you know when to hold them and know when to fold them. And that's the thing is that because if you don't understand the game that's being played, then you will hold them or fold them and it will be too late. And so terrestrial immortality is a thing and it is, it can, it, it can happen. It, it, it actually exists. But remember, absolution through politics, religion, and science. And when you think about it, of the stories from way back when, if you say like of the Bible, yeah, humans were developed to be slaves. But the slaves quarters is not what you think. I mean, it probably was way back 6,000 years ago. But now the slavery system is the indentured servitude, like a performer, like an actor or an actress or someone groomed to be somebody's wife. A Stepford wife. Okay, just to be an arm candy and accessory to a powerful man somewhere out there in the world. And when you're and when you are trapped in that world, it's very difficult to get out of it. Okay, so that's why <laughs> women have to be so much stronger than the men out there, especially if they are a Stepford wife. Because if you want to live you're going to have to tell your man that bought into the Stepford wife that you need to fart, sneeze, and blow your nose. And it's not going to be ladylike or feminine. You got to be, you got to, you got to fight for your life, women out there. And men too. So yeah, yesterday when my arm was sore, I felt it in my wrist all the way up to my right lymph node underarms. And I felt the energy yesterday. Oh, it was aggressive yesterday. Oh, it was. And so, um, and so this is what I, this is what I ask the people out there. <clears throat> what do you have to offer to the world besides another religion, remedy, drug, entertainment, distraction, and political thought process that was already done before? And so that's what I'm saying. Too much redundancy in the population. So what do you have to offer besides absolution? And so this is directed to those in the J world who are not, who are actually serious, not just dabbling. And most people in the J world, not all, but most people in the J world are dabblers because they don't understand the bigger picture. Again, they're lost into blaming somebody, the chemtrails, the vax, the everything. They're blaming everything under the sun. And so when someone dabbles into something, they're just kind of like dipping, uh, superficial, dipping their hand in the pond, superficial, not really super, you know, serious about it, but they're just, just dabbling. Because when you're doing a bunch of J-Juice, even when you really shouldn't be doing it, because you don't need to in this environment, you're just dabbling. You're using it as a cure. I mean, again, it's not poison, but you're using it as a cure, and the cures are deadly in this environment. Cures are deadly. Remember, everything is based upon the external and the internal. You have to understand the external environment, how aggressive it is, and you have to understand your internal environment. And they work hand in hand. And when the external environment changes... It will also influence influence the internal environment. And you have to understand how those two work hand in hand. And it's all about energy conversion. And you need food. And you have to realize that you have to feel the body releasing those demons. You can't be cured in this environment. You can't. I mean, you could. But what's the end result? Die suddenly or a massive deterioration? Starvation. Because look what what, what, I, what that physical therapist wrote about the people that are coming to see her. They're wasting away. Muscle wasting is happening. Muscle wasting is happening. People are not hungry. Let me tell you, when the energy shifts, I get hungry. After all these transmissions I do, I get hungry afterwards. I eat. After the energy I spend to giving it to you guys, I go and feed it. I make, you know, I have... Still that Chinese chicken salad and I made some more of it and I add, you know, some pork chops that I fry up and I cut up and put it in there with the sauce and I have, I add rice, I make rice or I make the spaghetti noodles and put it in there like a chow mein and I eat and I have a bunch of ice cream sandwiches. I had like two of them yesterday in the afternoon, two of them in a row. Okay. And so I feed this energy. And I'm hungry when I'm hungry. I'm not 
starving myself. And so when I quote stuff from the movie, it's not what I think, it's the evidence, what you can make the evidence say. So that's the thing about arguments out there, when people want to prove their point and how they're right. And so John goes, but still, evidence will only suggest or strongly suggest, but still proves nothing. I'm like, well, it proves nothing to those who believe in the other side of something. And so when someone doesn't believe something, it, nothing, there's not enough proof in the world for you to give them when they don't believe something or they don't only want to try on the other argument because they're so entrenched in one way. That's bias. Because physics and science and chemistry and math and English will give you both sides of the argument. There's context. That's what the equal sign on both sides of the equal sign is. There's context on each side. Okay? And so when you look at the definitions of a word and you look at all the different definitions, when it's an adverb or a verb or a noun or an adjective <laughs> or a pronoun, those are all right relative to the context. But do you see someone who is biased and tunnel vision able to look at all the context and look at all the arguments? No. They will stay in one argument and that's it. They will not venture out. And so then they believe nothing except for what they believe in. And so I say, it proves nothing to those who believe in the other side of something. And then John goes, yes, I like the old film, 12 Angry Men. Highlights a lot about the evidence. And so I posted, oh yes, 12 Angry, 12 Angry Men in 1957, American courtroom drama film directly by, directed by Sidney Lumet Adapted from a 1954 teleplay of the same name by Reginald Rose, the film tells the story of the jury of 12 men as they deliber deliberate the conviction of an acquittal of a teenager charged with, with murder on the basis of reasonable doubt, disagreement, and conflict among them forced the jurors to question their morals and values. It stars Henry Fonda. And so, yeah, I'll tell you, when you're trying to convict somebody, you're trying to find reasonable doubt, and all this evidence is either closely related or somehow circumstantial and you got to figure out intent and since no one was there except for two people and one person is dead, how then do you develop a case that would provide reasonable doubt to get them off or provide enough evidence to have be convicted? And so, yeah, you don't want to ever be in that position where someone has to, we're so close that someone's going to have to prove your innocence through reasonable doubt. That's insane. Okay. And so that, that's why I, I, I get now that the system, the way it is and why it's not black and white people think it is. There are so many gray areas and you have to understand how to play those gray areas. And yeah, you never ever want to be defending yourself against a murder. <laughs> okay. And even being in the wrong place at the wrong time, who are you hanging out with that you're at the wrong place at the wrong time? I'm very careful who I hang out with, what I do. I don't go to bars and I don't get involved in too many people's drama. I'm not in people's houses all the time hanging out with them. I'm not watching somebody else's children. You know, I hang out with my husband when I need to and, you know, we do our thing. But again, you don't want to be caught in the wrong place at the wrong time because of your lifestyle and your belief systems. Okay. It's about protecting yourself so you don't end up in a courtroom drama trying to provide reasonable doubt to save yourself from going to jail for 50 million years. And that's why you don't give medical advice. And that's why you have to understand that even when someone is in hospice, you don't want to try to save people who are already too far gone. You don't want to save anyone. But again, why people are in hospice and palliative care is because of the years and years and years and years of them violating the laws of life. Why they have cancer disease and chronic illness is because they've had years and years of violating the laws of life and then the environment held them to account. So it wouldn't matter if it be J-juice or pineapple juice or water or food. If you're too far gone, it's not going to matter what a person ate or drank or did because they didn't have what it takes to deal with the energy in their environment. And you have to eat. And they weren't eating poison because nothing's poisonous as far as food. FDA approved salt, water, and cabbage. And so, yeah. And even J-juice isn't, isn't poison. But when someone is, <laughs> is passing away with 
pineapple juice or with J juice or with anything. That was just the last straw that broke the camel's back. And so correlation is not equal causation. It's just the fact that that person was at the end of their line because of the years and years and years of, of, of violating the laws of life. And that's with everybody out there that is elderly, that has disease. And when you have a disease and you're not in palliative care or hospice, you have every fucking chance to turn that shit around. You don't have to die from cancer, disease, and chronic illness, even if you're in remission. But people do. Because they can't change. Okay? And so, yeah. And so, checks and balances. Here is what I <laughs> Wharton develops criminal financial wizards. Wharton College, like, you know, Penn State. Wharton develops criminal financial wizards. Wall Street and Harvard Law keeps them in, or Wall Street. And then Harvard Law keeps them in line or finds the loopholes. And that's what lawyers do. They either keep the people who are criminals in line or they find the loopholes to help the criminals get over on everybody. And so watch Suits. Watch that intellectual drama. Oh, it's a, it's great. I love, I'll tell you. That's probably the best show. That and, and so yeah, that, that's probably the best show I've watched in a long time. Oh, I love Suits. That's a match made in heaven. That's America. Wharton beats Harvard, right? But eventually the tides will turn and Harvard will beat Wharton, Trump. That's what's going on right now. Wharton is slightly more prestigious than Harvard for finance in today's world due to its superior reputation for the technical quants programming skills elements of finance. But in the arena of consulting, Harvard is high above Wharton and the combined effect gives the edge to Harvard. And the reason why is because, yeah, when you're a consultant, you're a consultant for both sides. You see, the finance system figures out all the financial models to figure out the buying and selling of, of investments and playing with money, turning money into something huge, right? And that's, that's Wall Street and hyping up stocks, even though there might not be substantial backing, but hyping up, hyping up air, that's the boiler rooms and, or that's crypto hyping up air. And then watching it go through its, its energy, people make a shit ton of money, they convert that to cash. And then those that are keep, you know, that get shorted all the time because someone's always selling out from underneath them. That, that's, that's, that's <laughs> a rich man fucking with the little people. Poor people who are trying to get rich will get, always will get fucked by the rich man. You've got to know how the games are being played. And if you want to get rich quick, you will always be taken advantage of. Always, because those that have money know how to fucking play with it. And they have enough leverage. And they can sell you a dream. Oh, you'll get rich quick. You invest in this crypto stock, invest in this stock, that stock, this company, that company. And you're like, oh, okay, it's a new thing. And they just throw their money at it. And so that that's, that's why you got to understand how the games are being played. Your brain is the currency. And your body is the currency. Don't let somebody keep taking your brain and your body for their gain. Understand the games are being played. And so I'm not in the business for money. Uh, money is about keeping score. <laughs> J World, so what, what game are you playing? And are you sure you want to win the, with the most chips? Maybe winning is what, isn't what you think it means. Okay. Because the more you make, the more you spend, the more you're enslaved. That's why I say, honey, um, I can take time and be at home while you make the money because if you cut down your <laughs> lifestyle, you won't have to work so hard to make all to make to make all the bills that you want, you know? Because I let me tell you, even with the utilities and with the mortgage that we have, it's not that much. He doesn't have to work so hard. But people work so hard because they want all the nice things. Okay. All right. And they want to play to play out to play the games out there. Okay. And so yeah. All right, let me read this. People are in starvation mode. And so two or more of my patients have passed away in the last five days. I'll tell you what I'm seeing more of muscle wasting, failure to thrive. My patients are looking more like patients I had in the 90s with AIDS, complete muscle wasting work, weakness, eyes drawn and face drawn in it's incredibly sad. I'm praying for everyone. And then the update to that is that I'm a physical therapist. I'll also add a lot of my patients are experiencing a loss of appetite, just no desire to eat. What else am I seeing? Turbo cancer, rapid progression of Parkinson's, 
the shaking, right? Dementia, sepsis, UTIs, wow. Repeat and chronic infections and syncopal episodes, which is fainting, suddenly. The list is huge. Oh, yeah. When the environment changes, people's growth go on turbo. That's why these kids are maturing faster. That's why they have little geniuses out there because they've been given the gifts of the antibody antigen programming and it and their brain has been programmed for that because of the blood types. And so then you're seeing them go through their textbooks like it is water and then they get their degrees and they're they're developing or producing so much at such a young age because of the highly accelerated environment. And then it also is increasing, again, people's deterioration process, as she is talking about. And so the kids are going to get smarter and, and deteriorate faster in this environment. And those who are on their, on their way out the door will accelerate that process on their way out the door. And so the J world, you got to hold the line and fluctuate. Because the kids are going to mature faster and some will, will get predisposed issues or become smarter. And those that are middle-aged to older will see an acceleration in their deterioration process. It is all by design. And so, um, yeah, reasonable doubt, whatever. And yeah, I did that. Oh, that's right. When I said, okay, about the whole checks and balances, then I said, America, Trump famously graduated from Penn's Wharton School in 1968. A fact he reminds audience over and over again, per Penn Students newspaper, The Daily Pennsylvania, he publicly name-dropped Wharton 52 times between June 2015 and January 2018. <laughs> and so, yeah, he's the financial wizard that is now being held to account. He didn't know the law, and he didn't have enough lawyers in his corner to make sure he knew the law and to protect him. That's why you don't want to depend on somebody else. You better know the law on your own because you can't afford to allow somebody else to take care of you legally in a high profile situation like that and being president ah fuck what's your intention especially in this environment it's not about being president you're just used as a tool obama's used as a tool so was george bush but they knew what they were getting into they were the, or did they i don't know you don't know but did trump know what he's getting into who the fuck knows <laughs> who the hell knows <laughs> that's why being a conspiracy theorist anything is possible Anything is possible. And so journalism. This is about all the journalists. You can be a journalist in in Minnesota State, you can be a journalist from Stanford, you know, trained in Stanford. Journalist you can be a journalist trained in any other state colleges or whatever colleges. The art of telling a story based in data and science, and you can spin it however you want. People are groomed to be influencers. And so this is from um, a Stanford website about their journalism program. We're passionate about storytelling plus data. Right now, work at Stanford and the broader Silicon Right now, work at Stanford and the broader Silicon Valley is changing the way stories are discovered, told and transmitted. We are part of the transformation empowering students to produce work that is multimedia, data intensive, entrepreneurial and influenced by design and thinking. By design thinking be part of this innovation. See our mission statement. Read a message from Director James T. Hamilton. Learn about the master's program. Finding the hidden stories in data. We love storytelling. And at the time where data is everywhere, we're training students to have the tech know-how to discover stories using data skills and how to effectively tell stories using multimedia. That's exactly what they did with me. That MIT graduate found all my trolls and told a fucking story. And the story is all over freaking the internet and Wikipedia, okay? And so, yeah, you could spin stories to go and slam someone, to slam evolution, to slam new innovation. And you can tell stories to pump somebody up and be like, wow, this is awesome. This, I'll tell you, there's, you know the intention of some of these storytellers. And when you are part of a system that isn't ready for major evolution, you will spin that story and slam someone and hang them out to dry. And that's exactly what some of these journalists do, because they don't understand evolution, and they're a product of their environment, and they're a product of people not ready for evolution, and they will shit on evolution in any way possible. So anyone doing a story on me today, you are definitely shitting, and if you're trying to do it to slam me, you are shitting on fucking evolution, and you're part of the problem. And you will be the one to pass away in the system. 
So I dare anyone to write a fucked up story about me because I know how to play the person. I know what they're up against. I know exactly what they're doing and who they are. And I, oh, I can play those odds and I'll make them look like shit too on the way out. What do you mean on the way out? Well, <laughs> on my way out of that fucking argument. Oh, I dare any journalist to come out and fuck and do another fucked up story about me because I will hang them out to dry. And I, and I, and again, I know people. I know what they went through. I know Silicon Valley and I know even those outside of Silicon Valley, what they're up against, what they have done, what they're doing and what position they're in and how compromised they are in body, mind and spirit because of the privilege that was given to them. And I know the system. Oh, I, I will fuck with you if you fuck with me. I will fuck with you intellectually and I'll run circles around you. So don't even think that you're going to make a story about me in a fucked up way because I will run circles around you. And so I'm just going to put that as a warning out there. And so turning data into stories. In partnership with big local news, Army or Amy DePero analyzed more than 45,000 debt lawsuits filed in Santa Clara and San Mateo counties between 2017 and the first quarter of 2021 and conducted interviews with more than a dozen people sued for debt during the pandemic. The story package which was DePera's the thesis project published in Bay City News. Oh, there you go. So they're going to have all these you know, young graduates doing their thesis projects, finding the stories. And that's why I'm like, you know, don't even, don't even use me as a platform. I, I dare you. Because what you're doing is you're advocating more cancer, more damaged cells. If you're in, if you're in the media, CNN, Fox, wherever, and you're advocating that people get cures and get operations and get all the stem cell transplants. You're advocating more reasons why someone would get cancer because the more damage you do to someone's body, the more it's going to want to go and purge out the damage and become whole again. And that's called cancer. And in this environment, we're on turbocharged cancer. So if you are going to advocate people keep doing damage to themselves, I will run circles around you. I will run circles around you because we're releasing the demons. We're, we are fixing the damage in our body by releasing the damaged cells and eating food, not looking like a fucking emaciated person in a magazine, but we're eating food, meat, milk, cheese, eggs, everything, mostly milk and cream and meat, proteins, and we're advocating you face those demons. And yeah, release that crap in your body that's causing all of your issues. And we're not harming ourselves. We're not advocating antibiotics. We're not trying to stop the symptoms. And that's completely the antithesis of everything in the mainstream and even in the alternative mainstream and all the holistic people. So I fucking dare any journalist to go and write shit about me. I dare you. I fucking dare you. And just because you have MIT or Stanford or Berkeley or, you know, I don't know, uh, USC or UCLA or Yale or Harvard or Cambridge or Oxford, oh, that's great. You have high degrees, but you're still advocating people do damage to themselves. Maybe it's time to evolve academia, and that's what I'm advocating. Evolution. Don't shit on evolution because you say you guys in academia are about evolution. You say it, but you don't fucking prove it because you're developing more stem cells, more damage to people's bodies. And so using multimedia tools to tell a story in immersive journalism class, MA Master of Arts students collaborated with noted British environmental photographer Mandy Barker using her images to create a virtual reality experience. Ripple Plastic, the unintended life of plastic at sea. The experience submerged viewers into the sea filled with... Okay, blah, blah, blah. All right, that's great. Uh... Oh yeah, C curriculum. You'll build you'll build skills in the latest storytelling and data tools, including Hindenburg audio editing, GitHub, the command line, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, databases, and SQL, Python, and then there's R, advanced spreadsheet techniques, Twitter API, and Tableau, Tabula, and data cleaning, Arc GIS mapping, Adobe Photoshop. WordPress, CMS, social media, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. 
And so you'll learn how to, how to tell a story through all these different mediums with Stanford. And you can chase stories and spin it. And exactly what, again, that MIT graduate did. She took, she took the platform of JJ's and she fucking shit on it. Completely shit on it. But hey, that's okay. That, that incentivized me to get shit figured out. But I dare any journalist out there. I dare any journalist out there. I don't care who you are to shit on this now. Oh, I dare you. When you have friends and family all around you dropping like flies because they can't handle the atmospherical changes and you keep advocating them go to the hospital, get oncology and more surgeries. No, you're not helping your friends and family at all. And then your poor kids have your predisposed issues. You think they're going to survive a really fucked up environment if they haven't been able to turn that shit around? Yeah. I dare any journalist now to shit on this now. I dare you. I dare you. I dare you. Because I will turn that shit around on you. So anyways, wow. <laughs> so, um, oh yeah. <laughs> so about men can get, men getting pregnant. Yeah, I guess it happened in India. This guy was holding his, his own twin in his body that was feast feeding off his stomach contents. We were horrified. We were confused and amazed. To my surprise and horror, I could shake hands with somebody inside. It was a bit shocking for me. The absolutely baffled doctor thought at first it was a case of vanishing twin syndrome, meaning Bogat's twin could have died during pregnancy and have been reabsorbed. But it's more accurate to say that he was part of the very rare fetus in fetus where one fetus, where one twin is literally born inside the other. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> Holy shit. Basically the inside twin lives, lives like a parasite, but usually the host twin would realize something was happening not ignoring it like Bog got. I guess the guy ignored it. <laughs> and he reportedly refused to look at the lump of hair and flesh twin that was removed from him. And he is now back to trying to live a normal life. So I guess when they removed that twin out of his body, he didn't want to look at it and see. What, oh, I, I can only imagine. I wouldn't want to look at it either. Oh, my God. Freed from the twin brother living off his stomach context, contents, he reportedly back to working every day, although his neighbors in the community still remember him being the pregnant man. So I guess every time he ate, he got bigger and bigger. His belly got bigger. So he was pregnant with his own twin. That's the sacred, infinite sacred geometry. That's why you have to make sure that you have a strong immune system. Immune system. You have the fat. You have the food. You have the release process. But see, he didn't have probably enough food or enough fat. And he was working so hard and not a really good release process. Probably didn't have a bunch of salt. Or know how to release those demons. And so he had a thing going inside of him. And his immune system was very weak. Or it would have purged that out. Or reabsorbed in the body. In a first world it probably would have happened a, reabsor a reabsorption. But in a third world where you're still. When you're starving. And you're working your ass off. Then you will have a thing growing inside of you. When all the conditions are right. That's why it's so important to understand the release process. The J world is about releasing those demons. So they don't turn into something. That could be like that or make you so fertile that at a drop of a dime, you know, a sperm gets in there and makes a baby that quickly. Okay. And so, yeah, <laughs> the J world is about becoming whole again. And it's not about damaging any more of your organs and any more of your skin or any more of your body, mind or spirit. And it's not about sustaining damage in your body either. It's about releasing the demons and becoming whole again. And that's, and, and in order for the system to groom people to be influencers, to be whatever, damage had to be sustained. And they had to make certain parts of the brain stronger. And sometimes the body had to, to be compromised in order for the brain to become stronger. We'll look at Stephen Hawking. His body was compromised, but his brain was like, holy shit. So he was mostly brain than body. And then he had that, all of his, you know, his findings in physics, astrophysics. All right. And then there's degrees of that in between, you know, someone who is type O and always someone who's type AB positive. All that energy conversion. And so the system, the system did that for a reason. And, it's, and, I, and you can't get mad at it. It's just what it is. And so what the, what's the law equals the regulation of antigen antibody programming and end up whole or unwhole. And so it is a series of infinite action, reaction, action, reaction, action, reaction, action, reaction. 
And you have to understand each action, each reaction, everything can be redirected if you want. And so the law is if you want to die, then you'll have all the action reactions end up in death. If you want to stay alive, then your action and reactions are going to promote life. And so the outcome is the intention, even if you're ignorant of the intention. And that's what people bank on, other people to be ignorant. And so we have Africa right now. We have some pretty highfalutin Africans out there in Africa who are going to influence people to read. And they're going to, they're going to get high level degrees. They're going to, they're going to do like the art of war. They're going to you know, read all the books that the first world developed. And there's going to be the same kind of split. You're going to watch Africa be up and coming. That's why I follow, I follow different people, like people in Ukraine, people in Africa that are influencers. Because I'm watching what they're doing and, and how they have mirrored what what we have done into that world. And so they'll get everybody groomed to be specific things. They probably don't have a lot. I mean, they, they've been... Africa is pretty hot. Very hot. And very strong people. A lot of melanin because they have to have protection from the UV rays. And so we're going to watch. And so at some point, yeah. Even Africa will go through the same thing that we're going through. Can it be even hotter in Africa? Oh, it can. Oh, I'll tell you. <laughs> the system knows how to figure out how to keep level the playing field. But they're going to go through a major population burst. Like they're going to have the the main population growth to get us from 8 billion to 12.9 billion, mainly from Africa. They're going to have a huge population boom and then eventually it'll be a bust. But we're going to watch them boom and watch them go through the same thing we went through. They're going through the herbs, extracts, the doctors, all the different religions and philosophies and education. And so everyone will be, will be held to up to working from a level playing field. And then you'll see the bust of the population. And so, yeah, yeah, so I'm watching them closely. So right now, like when I say Botswana proposed new stadiums for AFCON 2027, they'll get into sports, do the soccer. Just like, you know, the World Cup, there's the African Cup, soccer, all that. And so words turn warriors into writers and writers. So, yeah. So you have to take these tribes in Africa and they were all warring with each other and, and all that. Then you have to turn them into writers, turn them into intellectuals where they can fight wars through the words. That's what the suits is all about. Is, is is taking people down financially, not destroy them physically, but take them down financially, even through their image. That's the warriors that are in the suits. That's the intellectual wars. That's the suits. It's all about war through the words and through finance, through finances. That's the wars that you're in in the first world is when you're getting taken for everything you have because you're being sold a dream. And so you're dumping all your money into this stock here and then someone shorts the fuck out of it. That's the wars that you're in. But no one's coming into your house and forcing you to do anything. No one's taking, you know, a sword to you or a machete to you. But they fed onto your psychological. They know they know who their enemy is. And their enemy is desperate for money, desperate for image, social capital, desperate for adulation, desperate for love. And the system knows that. And so, yeah, it's not the law of the jungle. It's not the law of the jungle. Now it's the intellectual wars. Know the fucking wars, the kind of wars you're in, and what even what Africa's going through. They're going to go through their own intellectual war. It'll be interesting to watch. And so Stanley Kubrick, there's this uh, meme about Stanley Kubrick, the eyes of Stanley Kubrick, and... Yeah, he knew what the human experimentation developed, and that was his specialty. All the serial killers and degrees of aggressive behaviors towards anything triggering anyone's emotions or trauma. Yeah, you have the, the shining and clockwork orange and the eyes wide shut. And that, I don't know, I forget, I don't know what that other movie is. Is it Terminator? And then some, I don't remember the other movies, I don't. But you see what America has produced. A lot of different people. And so I watched a documentary on the America, like the NSA. And then there you go. 
I'm up to now my current stuff. All right, so that's all I'm going to say, but understand the wars that you're in and trust fund kids are no better than those who are poor and destitute. Because when you get trapped, when you get trapped in wealth, it's very hard to, to give it up. And if you're a Stepford wife and you have an image to maintain, yeah, good luck with that. Good luck with that. And so that's why some people are trapped in their life. They can't get out. But I do not advocate you slamming me because you can't get out of the life that you're in. You have choices. But don't slam the J-World because you don't have because you feel you don't have choices. Don't slam the J-World. You were given this life and you chose to stay in it. Don't slam the J-World because we want to become whole again and not get pigeonholed like you are. All right. Bye.